I saw the games I don't see myself 20 years ago. And, and when I was a child, about 10 years old, I see of my mother to Rukus for study. And the river was a thousand meters in, in, in white. Okay. Now it's almost empty. This year we had no water here. You could just walk. Uh, we already uh, put it on the map, a new desert, Aralkum. There is Kazilkum, there is Karakum, and now new desert, Aralkum, which is a former sea. And there is expectation that next three years we will have no water in, in, in Karakal, Pakistan. So there is question on population life, on people's life, people's uh, future. We are drinking polluted water. We are eating polluted vegetables. We are drinking polluted milk. We are eating polluted uh, meat. Of course, it has reflects on the people health. The drying of Arasi is a, a very, very huge cat catastrophe huh? with uh, lots of uh, adverse impacts. And it is an established fact that uh, the wrong policies uh, in favor of, uh, you know, more uh, creating more production in the region and turning the region into uh, cotton fields uh, caused that catastrophic problem. You are also having a number of negative effects in the immediate area of the Aralsi area, but also to a certain extent throughout the entire region. You know, and that has a lot to do with this question of salinization, um, the salinization of the land, but also the uh, salinization of, of the groundwater. You have these dust storms, um, which at this point in time, you know, the, the region has one of the high, has the highest uh, dust deposition rate in the world. It's estimated if and when the Aral Sea completely dries up, there'll be over 1,500 billion tons of salts liberated into the environment. Clearly, you know, that's not just a localized problem, that's going to be a problem uh, for the whole region. The scenario that I have heb is also not echt optimistisch. The huidige staat van het meer is natuurlijk dat het al eigenlijk in stukken uiteenvalt. En als ik 15 jaar verder kijk, dan is het inmiddels uiteengevallen in allerlei kleine stukjes en ondiepe gedeeltes, etc. Uh, helaas is het zo dat als daar een, uh, in de toekomst een zoutmeer ontstaat, dat er allerlei milieuproblemen waarschijnlijk veel erger dan de huidige gaan ontstaan. The problems in the Aral Sea area are already affecting the entire region. You know, they're, um, they're affecting the entire region in terms of the ability of the governments in the region to, to cooperate and to discuss, and it's affecting obviously the, uh, the international relations uh, within the region. Uh, but it's not just, of course, the, the drying up of the sea, which is specific to the Aral Sea area. Huh? It's, it's also due to the whole process, which has contributed to the drying up of the sea, mainly the over-irrigation. Why are these problems ontstaan? Nou, 70 years long, and zelfs under the Tsaren regime, is it al begonnen. Is daar geforceerd, is daar katoen productie ontstaan, uitgebreid, and since the 60 years of the name, enorm uitgebreid. And men heeft daar gewoon de waterresources voor gebruikt. Their agriculture is tied in to irrigation. Not because they chose for it to be that way, but because the Soviets built miles and miles and miles of huge canal irrigation networks that are horribly inefficient. And so what do we do? Do we just we just the five countries come together and pass a resolution that says, okay, well, we're not going to irrigate anymore. Next year, no more cotton. We can't just uh, think, well, you know, it's cotton and then stop growing cotton. You know, the, um, it is a situation of cotton monoculture, which means the entire way of life is based on the production of cotton. So it's not as if 
the governments can wake up tomorrow and say, oh, the heck with cotton, let's start producing uh, computer uh, microchips kind of a thing. The main problem in the Central Asia is how to divide the water without any conflicts. And it is highly possible that it can cause conflicts between countries. And you, or it is already evident when you go into certain uh, communities, say in Fergana, maybe, you see Uzbeks blaming Kyrgyz people, Kyrgyz people blaming Uzbek people for taking the water away from each other. This is happening in very grassroots level. And uh, sometimes they are right, sometimes they are not. Uh, but that breeds the conflict. Huh? You have two lands die the water producers are, with name Kyrgyzstan and also Tajikistan, and the south of Kazakhstan, misschien. And you have two to three lands die the water consumers are, and that are Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and the south and southwest of Kazakhstan. The verhouding is heel erg scheef. So this is, of course, this is not only even the regional. This is international problem. Because, of course, it is, will be a um, big problem within Central Asian countries for water. The problem of water management, water dividing between states, it came to be not technical, but political. Cheering.